Good afternoon. How are you? Welcome to Andres Rodriguez English Coach to this afternoon transmission. Well, we have the presence and attendance of some colleagues. Lorena, she's living in Quito. Uh, Catherine, who lives in, in Spain. Okay. Maria Elena, Hello. you can hear me. Hi. Hello. Maria Elena is from, from Machala. Okay. Yes. Hello. So, uh, in, in some couple of minutes, welcome, Miss Bonaventura, Miss Florida. We are we are going to attend. We are going to start. The topic that we are going to begin today is about scheming and scanning. How to improve in the reading skills. Okay. So this topic is addressed to English teachers and how you can use it in a proper way and it can be very uh, productive and useful for you. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to uh, to introduce this topic now. Um, I'm going to ask you that at this moment you can use the, the keyboard. You can use the keyboard if you want to write a question or you want to make a comment, okay? From this uh, topic now, from this presentation. Well, I'm going to share a screen. I'm going to begin presenting the topic. Okay. Okay, very initially, Andres Rodriguez, English coach, present this topic. And I want you to, I want you to ask I want you I want you to respond one question that I'm going to ask you right now um, I think that we can do it we can interact directly Lorena Catherine because we are only two teachers or three teachers right now okay do you have this question this is a general and open questions for teachers like you for example what kind of reading materials do you select to your students okay um, in my case, uh, Lorena, uh, um, Maria, and um, Catherine, I try to select uh, some topics that are uh, students' interest, that they um, engage the students. For example, uh, fashion, sports, clothes, you know, topics that are according to the student's age, and student's interest, the student's background, something like that. and. This is what I consider, no? Especially yeah. from magazines. What yeah. about you? Uh, I don't really agree with you because it depends on the level of the students because they have uh, different levels um, and also different interests. So we have to take into account if we are uh, teaching young learners, so some stories, short stories, uh, I don't know. And if they are adults, they have another interest. So it's good for them to look some real material that they are interested on it. Okay, thank you so much. So we are we have already agreed with the fact that uh, it depends on the interest. What do you think about that, Lorena? In your experience as a teacher, what kind of materials do you select to your students? In my case, I have a, um, elemental students in elemental school, elementary school, and I select uh, uh, stories about heroes, superheroes, or uh, um, about uh, the country, the um, social studies. Uh, something like how is your context how is it the environment of my students uh, uh, are inside the day actually nowadays uh, the technology is an important tool if we can find out some um topic interesting topics now for example you mentioned um Catherine, you mentioned um novels no it's stories um, no poems short stories Yes, exactly. And that's a, it's very important because the students make connections, especially when they read the story in the in the mother tongue, so in Spanish. So yeah. they they can easily make connection with English. That's why I, um, it facilitates the, the, the process of the process. Uh, 
Exactly, the process of interacting with the reading activity, no? Well, I have another question. This question is about effects, no? What positive or negative effects do you notice when students uh, start in the process of reading activities? When, um, well, this question is about, for example, um, what reactions, what emotions, okay, what facial expressions do you observe in your students when they read something that they like or, or when they don't, when refuse something that you present and they don't like it? What do you think about that, uh, Catherine? I think I have experience also with young learners, with kids, with children, and they can easily uh, be engaged with, uh, for example, with a story, let's suppose, or maybe when they are reading a tumble twister, they can learn easily. Um, but uh, you can notice also when they don't understand something and they are not engaged with the activity, when it's maybe something bored for them, or uh, when it is something, it's too long, the text, for example, is too long. So this is the negative effect that I can see it. And, and we as a teacher, we can, uh, we can notice quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, definitely. It's, quick. it's not so expression they demonstrate you that they don't simply don't want to do yeah yeah they, they feel a little bit react uh, they don't want to participate or something like that exactly they refuse no refuse that that's the word they refuse to work <laughs> Lorena what do you think about the positive or negative effects mm. um, they uh, uh, I I can can see they they don't like uh, uh, the the story so long. Um, they refuse that uh, when the the stories are is not in according to the vocabulary they they know. Mm -hmm. And they 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 uh, don't like. The uh, essentially, Lorena. And I agree with you. You already mentioned something which is very important: the prior knowledge. You see the vocab, the prior vocabulary, the requirement that they are required to know before you begin a lesson. When you begin, when you start a lesson plan, you include the key vocabulary, the the keywords, no, the words that are important, or do you consider that they previously know in order to introduce a a reading activity? comprehension so that, um, obviously um, reading comprehension activity no which a student have to use some uh, skills reading skills no to read fast to circle the current answer so um, if they don't know the, the words or that not, that's not that it doesn't matter if the, if the story is easy or not but if they're not familiar with the vocabulary they simply reject no they don't they don't accept that that uh, reading activity so thank you thank you for your uh, contribution to these questions okay this is a no this is these are open questions to begin this okay so i'm going to pass to another slide and i'm showing you okay this person this lady the the one you observe now um this is a this this picture sometimes reflects the reality that occurs in some classrooms okay when students don't know or when the teacher sets a couple of reading materials no but they but these materials are not consistent okay according to the students needs no i mean difficult vocabulary activities that are that, that, that don't engage students um, no pre-activities uh, a prediction activity where students can uh, talk about it so when you present a reading activity uh, you need to visualize you, know? you need to present very visual in order to motivate your students so but another problem that we find out when teachers uh, work on on reading comprehension in some circumstances is the question 
Do you assume that your students know how to read from home? What does this question mean? So, in, in some occasions, I, um, I see that some teachers, they assume that the students, oh, okay, they know to read because in the school they had English or they studied uh, lengua literatura. So, they suppose, they figure out that the student comes with uh, the ability to practice, but it doesn't happen in real life. What do you think of, about that, Catherine? Do you agree with that question? It um, to you. Okay, I consider that we don't have that culture to read in Spanish and in also in English. Okay, so maybe um, we should to create that uh, reflection about the reading because we have uh, when we have time we should to do that. And we as a teacher, we should be prepared and read a lot. But some of our students, they don't do that. So it's really important to consider that they don't read at home, uh, even in Spanish or, or English. The, we don't have that, that culture. So when we have a, a reading activity, they just read a little bit. Uh, I am talking about my experience with children. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, uh, it's a good experience, yes. <laughs> yes, and that's that's why I think about that. We exactly. should practice. We should practice that. We ha we should to have that habit and transmit to our students. So building habits can be the real statement that we can make our students begin with this process. No. When yeah. we were when we were young, I remember in high school in in the school. Okay, we were educated in some aspects that we have to read a specific kind of books. I remember, no, yes. according to the genre, yes. no, in in Spanish first. El Quijote de la Mancha, for example. <laughs> you <have> yes, to... <laughs> exactly, and they are supposed to be books. It's that like to be to mandatory be for us to to learn about. When you are coursing literature, uh, you should do it. I still remember it. I also read my, my one of my teachers sent us to read that. And we have to analyze, uh, read some questions. No, simply just the questions. We have to respond deeply questions. No? So I remember that yeah. it was demanding about it. What do you think about uh, that, Lorena? Uh, do you particularly think that uh, is correct that we assume that? Uh, what is the question again? The question is this: If you are right, if you agree or disagree, that is the, the it's necessary that teachers assume the role that the students know how to read from home. No, we don't have to assume that because I think they don't have uh, they don't have anybody to support them to read at home. Even though due to technology now, we can say that kids uh, maybe they practice reading in using their phones. They read on some social medias, but we don't have to assume that we need to teach them like. They don't know anything. That is my idea, I think. In, in fact, I agree with you. Great, great contribution for you. We don't have to assume that, teachers, mm -hmm. no? Um, mm -hmm. Catherine point, points out that we don't have the building habit, okay, because that building habits we must have from um, our education that our parents bring us from home. Okay, and then we go to school and we continue with the rest of our prof uh, students' life, no? When we are in the secondary and we still continue growing up with the, in this process of reading. So the process of reading never stops. We, it's necessary that we grew before, okay, in the, in the, in the young years, no? When we were very young. So this is very important and thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Um, we are going to move forward to another slide, which is about, this is reading skills, okay? 
Okay, we have to distinguish teachers. We have many ideas, many concepts according to authors. Okay, let me, I'm going to make it a little, little bit long, bigger. You can read it. No, it's okay, no? Yeah. You can, yeah. you can read it. Yes. Thank you. It's okay. 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 I chose this quote from this person because um, it is a visual process no? that begins with one's ability to use one's vision to, inter to interpret graphing symbols, okay? The, this, um, uh, this person, okay, he's not referring only about graphic symbols. It, mean, it contains a message, okay? For example, you have a text, you have a paragraph, okay? You have symbols. The symbols are the codes with letters, okay? You know that, okay? Exactly. Or oh, not simple letters. We are talking about numbers, okay? Representations. For example, when you read the newspaper and you, you don't you don't only read words, you're really you you are reading information that is information con is contained in letters or in numbers. For example, um, our students our students want to know more about uh, the number of people that are I don't know um, being uh, in the hospitals so they can read a graphic statistic or maybe they read the last part with the numbers and that information is relevant because they are using uh, um, the reading skills no so they are moving their eyes from one side to another and that's an ability that they have developed so in some in, in some occasions we can use different type of reading skills that I will be explaining you more, okay? What is reading comprehension? Reading comprehension is not a simple reading and you know that, okay? Okay, these several author, authors, they quote that they refer to understand what is read. So readers must be able to cognitively process the words by drawing meaning from their own experience and knowledge to understand the author's message. Wow, I really, I really appreciate this quote. That's why I am presenting now because reading comprehension is not only understanding um, what is contained. What is is more than that? Is the message is semantic? Is uh, the detailed information that you are required to understand, okay? So it's very important that reading skills are prominently used in real life, okay? So when we teach reading skills to our students, this is a, pro a cognitive process, no? And this process don't begin in a specific time. It must be developed, teachers, okay? Um, it could be good if we in the secondary we don't assume the fact that the students know how to read no that's why when we use the diagnostic test the placement test and we notice that our students uh, weaknesses are precisely in the in the reading skills okay maybe you when you prepare reading questions about um, a text and you say for example okay my student only has to circle the correct answer multiple choice or he has to uh, order the paragraph uh, putting in order and arranging in order the paragraphs so it's not so easy if the person doesn't has uh, hasn't developed uh, any reading skills so responding the the last question the question before i asked you we don't have to assume they know we have to skill working out strongly with them, okay? Following them, following them in the process and supporting them, okay? So this is reading comprehension teachers, okay? And these are, now we are going to move forward to one of the reading skills teacher that we have been discussing. Scheming, okay? 
the, the, the idea of a skimming, the idea of a skimming is that when you have a, a text, okay, what do you need to know about it? Not necessarily you have to know all the text, the vocabulary that is included in the text. But if you know keywords, okay, keywords are specific words that have connection with the context of the of the paragraph or the or the highlight, okay, or the the topic, no, of the of this. We're gonna read this um, concept. A scheming means reading selectively to get general idea of what an article is about and to become familiar with the most important ideas in it, okay? Um, to illustrate with these examples, um, we refer to the medias, no? Nowadays, the students can get access to internet, okay? They Google, and they can read all the information, even they are more well informed than we adults, okay? So, when they scheme, they are reading a specific information, particularly the titles, the subtitles, and also the words that make connection with these uh, keywords, okay? If they want to read about uh, fashion, okay, uh, artists, singers, they simply Google and they see the name of the person that they really admire and they are uh, scheming what is the information that they want to know more about it? For example, Selena Gomez, who is a singer, they are scheming, for example, the last song, the, 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 the last Selena Gomez song, and they immediately start scheming, okay, what is the title, and then go to YouTube, and they start listening to the song. So, scheming is part of the real life uh, reading skills. So, if we know how to adapt these reading skills in our in our students' cognitively process, they will be benefit. They will be it will be benefit for them. Okay. So I'm going to present more examples, uh, teachers, with these uh, reading skills. Okay. So let's go on to. Sorry. A scheme in here. All right. These are examples of skimmings. Newspaper, okay, magazines, or business and travel brochures, okay? Well, this example of skimmings, teachers, depends, it depends, okay, uh, of the student's interest, the student's age, a student's background, a student's uh, social, social status. So it depends on the student's belief, okay? Not necessary you need to use newspaper. You can use uh, Relia. For example, you can use um, advertisements, marketings, okay? Things like that. And motivate your students in order to read, okay? To find out information. I remember one example, and I want to share with you. Um, two years ago, when it was the, the, the World Cup in Russia, I think, um, in that time, during that time, the students were involved in soccer competition, especially in the soccer players. No, the they are very fan of them, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, okay, and other soccer players which are very famous. We are very famous. Um, I takes I took some um, hands on activity uh, sample of these uh, soccer players from <laughs> internet. <laughs> And I present them, okay, in some of my my classes. And I create a group activity, like CLIL. And I give them all the vocabulary they require, okay? So, what was the instruction for them to read? Just read the information, the title, and the, and the details that they have, and they have to create something like that, no? Like a newspaper, like a story using the materials that they have. So it was not demanding for them. It was very easy and also they find it very useful because it was something that was happening in the real life. Their, it, I was sharing their interest. So that activity uh, was very lovely for them. 
So this is an example that you can also do with your students. For example, you want to use content-based or task-based uh, activities. Uh, I'm not sure in some books you can use cooking, okay? Uh, pre food preparation, meal, cooking, okay? I'm sure they're going to use that, okay? And you can use a skimming when they when you when you teach them. And we have more examples of interesting topics related to real life, okay? Now, teachers, we are going to go to what is a scanning, okay? So let me ask you, let me ask you something about it. A moment ago, we were talking about the scheming, you no? Know? Scheming is a, is a strategy in which students have to uh, detect keywords, you no? Know? Especially with the title. Otherwise, scanning, what can be a scanning? What do you know about scanning, um, colleagues? Have you ever used this strategy before? What do you know about it? When you present, for example, a reading format test and you want the students circle the correct answer or they fill in the gaps, you're using a specific information from the text. Yes? For example, William Shakespeare was born in blank. This is a year, okay? Um, Caperucita had live in a blank. All right? So that information is there are some details that the student have to use their both eyes and move across the text in order to find out information and what information they need to find out here we have a scanning is a reading skill used to locate key or specific information very fast you need to be very fast when you use this examples dates numbers examples definitions okay a good a good example if you want to be very fun make a fun game you can use a crossword because the crosswords are when you see the crossword you have vocabulary yeah in different ways okay from left to right from right to left okay up across down different directions so I think you, you're you using a scanning in that activity because your students are familiar to use this when they read the newspaper, no? In that part. When the students use this scanning, they precisely use a scanning in both sit in these situations. When they want to look up a word in a dictionary or a number in a telephone, in a telephone director, directory, First, find a resource to determine whether it will answer your questions. Evidence. So, these uh, reading skills, scheming, scanning, they are uh, a skill that they face in their real life. Okay? Even in their cell phone, when they are texting a message and they are finding out the name of the person, their friend, their girlfriend, their boyfriend, they are scanning. Oh my God. So they're reading text and read message, okay? I'm my teacher, okay? I'm, they are using a scanning. My mother, my teacher, my friend, my group of friends, okay? My old friends from school. So you're scanning because you are paying attention to some specific details, all right? Before you do it in action in this moment. So... This is the theoretical part of this presentation, teachers. Um, at this moment, I'm sorry for this uh, illegible form of this. Uh, I'm going to make it more visual, all right? Sorry about that. Okay, this is an example of one activity that we can use in class, no? First of all, you, reading activities must be visual. Yeah, if you want to, to catch a student's attention, you need to make it visual. Otherwise, it will be bored and they won't be, they will reject the activity. So it's recommendable that you present it visually. 
okay, friendly, open eye friendly to your students, okay? Well, as you can see in this activity, teachers, you have an, uh, a context, okay? Visually, the students can observe uh, details, they can observe places, people, scenario, and they can also make predictions about it so they can open their mind. That's the idea, okay? So they are visualizing and they traveling. That's the idea of reading, no? That they are traveling when they are immersed in a text, no? In this way. What is the idea of this presentation? As you can see, some of the pictures are concerning to specific topics. Others, they are not so specific, but they have some things in common. The information that you read here, that you have under the pictures, for example, if I read it, if I, if I want to know, for example, how much is the cost, how much is the trouble, I can go fast and, 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 a, ski, and a scan, sorry, a scan, given the scanning about the price. And this is the information. My eyes are moving from up to down, all right? So you can also practice it. You can also practice with your students uh, exchanging the skills, integrating the skills. You can use reading with, with the speaking also, okay? To make it more practical, to make it more friendly, all right? You can make questions, all right? Especially in in intermediate levels or basic levels where the students need to be uh, follow and follow up, okay? And motivated to speak. In this way, you can do it. You can present in that way. So this is an example about um, a scheming and a scanning activity, all right? I have another- uh -huh. I have another strategy. Right. Yes, let me, I'm going to, Present it. Thank you, Carlos. Um, so, teachers, before you can ask me some questions about these uh, skills, let me share with you another part of examples to illustrate it. Okay, as you can see here, this is a real example, okay, of a level of, I would say, pre-intermediate, not too much basic, it's a pre-intermediate level of, of students. This is an example of how to use a scheming activities. As you can see in the instruction, the students properly have to, not necessarily to read everything. That's not good, okay? But the comprehension questions that they have to do is the one who are here. In the instruction where you can see, the question is, which position is best for these people? Choose only one position for each person. So each paragraph is referring to one specific person. In this case, you have Jen Madison. The information that you find here, okay, you need to connect immediately with the text that you previously watched. In this case, is number five. So in this case, students have to read, okay, use a skimming, because this information is related to the passage, okay, to the passage that is uh, in the paragraph uh, below. So let me show you different um, people that they have to do the same. All right. If you notice the vocabulary is here is about uh, professions, is about job experience. Okay, so. You can use it and adapt it according to the reality of your class, of your student, 
For example, if, uh, if I work in with basic levels, I probably connect with sports, with soccer, because those guys love sports. So I know that they are, they will do it or fashion or clothes or any or meal or maybe meals. Those are the topics that the students uh, in basic levels, they want to use, they want to use. Another example, teachers, I'm sorry. For a scanning, is when you have, you make your students uh, make involved in these uh, kind of activities. I think you are familiar with this, no? In this example, you have um, uh, an information, a text about a specific person. This is, I would say that this is for basic level, okay? According to the vocabulary and reading now. Okay, and the instruction is a specific information, adjective, nouns, numbers, um, a specific dates, okay, feelings like, things like that. It's a standardized test with multiple choice that you can use it when you want to make your students use a scanning, okay? So you can observe the different activities that I am presenting you, okay, at this moment. So these are examples about uh, the how can we use both uh, English skills, reading English skills, skimming and scanning. No, I was showing you, I was showing you most of these um, examples because in the in the institute or the place where, where I work, I was doing a pilot research with my students in module one. Uh, I think this, if a student has this cognitive process from module one to advanced levels, I think they won't have any problem when they read advanced books, especially uh, scientific articles according to the profession or career that they are going to study in the future. So um, that's my my contribution with this topic, scheming and scanning. And I hope you can adapt, okay, in your school, in your school, with university or college, or any other place where you're working, maybe in online classes. So we can also discuss and we can compare results. And you can tell me, okay, if it was useful for you or Unless it is not, we can also make some adjustments or changes. So at this moment, um, now you have the word, you can ask questions. I can read it from the, from the chat or maybe you can use your, your microphone. I have a question, Andres. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mercedes. Hi. Hi, Catherine. Um, I would like to know, according to your own experience, which one is easier for students, skimming or scanning, and which one is faster for them, skimming or scanning? Okay. Thanks. I, I appreciate your question because, uh, well, in the beginning of, the, of my presentation, uh, I was explaining, okay, I would say again, that it's recommendable that you can use these uh, um, English skills, reading skills, in the initial levels. Let's imagine that you have a, um, a bachelor course and your students uh, presented a bad, um, bad result in your diagnostic placement test. So as a teacher, you want to improve your students' reading skills, obviously. So far, you see your students First, they need vocabulary. So I recommend you to start first with scanning because scanning is easier for them to scan quickly or to move their eyes and see information in the, in the text. For example, uh, filling the gaps, uh, completing uh, information, um, multiple choice, it could be easier for them. They gain confidence, they gain confidence. Okay, and you're also building reading skill habits with your students. After that, you can use skimming. 
skimming, I recommend you to adapt. Don't 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 use the same um, the same text that you have in your teachers in your students uh, book. You can adapt other information or take the same reading that you have in your in your students book and make some adjustments and changes, and then go on with the activity that you have in your book. Um, Mercedes, I hope okay. you I respond your question. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. And I have another question. When they are canning, you ask a specific question, right? So uh, is it better if they give just the answer, for example, just a date, 1975, or is it better if they give a complete answer? It was built in 1974, for example. What do you want your students, what's better for them? To give just the short answer or a complete answer? Okay, thank you again. Okay, it depends, it depends on the approach that you want to use with your students, okay? What you're mentioning is very important, that's critical thinking, because um, if you want to the students Apart from telling you if the information is right or maybe a true or false, okay? When you have a true or false, let's let's suppose that you have a true or false statement, okay? But you want to verify your students know the answer because they can simply cheat the answer and put you true or false. So you, how you can control that? Asking or, or require or um, asking your students to... To, argue, to give an argument of the answer that have in the book. For example, if the answer is yes, obviously you don't need a, an argument. But if the answer is false, why false? Okay? So the only, the only way that the student can give you an argument is reading the, the information that is in the, in the text. So I, I agree with you in that part. So it depends on when you what do you want to uh, use in your in your class with your students to, to build the reading skills? And another question, thank you. Uh, skimming and scanning are specific for reading, but can you do some skimming or scanning with a listening activity? Okay. So it's only for reading. Skimming and scanning are particularly for reading skills they are reading skills uh, reading skills no? but for listening uh, for listening uh, you can use for example multiple choice when the students read but there are another strategies that you use no not necessarily they are called a scanning or for details no this is listening for uh, details or listening for a specific purpose when you use but it's uh, it's like skimming. It's, it could be like scanning because you can play a listening and you can ask your students, okay, give me the general idea of the listening. Mm -hmm. Yes? Am I right or wrong? <laughs> no. Okay, I understand the point. Let's suppose that you have your, you're listening a radio broadcast on a specific topic, no, about uh, uh, weather forecast, no? But you want to know um a specific information for example how was the weather how was the weather in the morning so particular that's for example if we compare if we compare to reading that's a that's uh that's a key information this is a, a specific information no but not necessarily you are uh, you are um using the the the, the scanning activity yeah you are you are listening a specific information that's okay no they are quite similar yes they are quite similar between reading and listening but this is another type of listening this is listening for a specific purpose okay and a final question is it important for them to know that they are scheming and scanning do we have to teach them the words, the scheming and scamming, and tell them, okay, right now you are scanning, right now you are scheming. 
is it important for them to know the meaning of the words? Do they have to know what they are doing or it's not important? Well, it is important because they need to understand why are they doing that, no? Not only the name, not only the name of the strategy. You have also to focus on why is the purpose. For example, you if you introduce the strategy, for example, you can explain that scheming is an important uh, reading skill that will be useful for the real life, no? When is scanning or why is scanning? Okay, why is useful scanning? Because when you are texting in a cell phone in your number, you want to know the directory or, or maybe a friend's number, you need to scan, you need to, or you need to scan if you have an alphabetic number, an alphabetic um, names, okay, you're skimming because you're seeing, you're see, observing the, no the name of the person. When scanning, when you, when in alphabetic numbers, you see all the people, okay? So you are skimming and scanning, you are using both reading skills. So you need to explain then not only what are they, Evidently, you need to explain the explain them why and um, when to use them. Why, why they are doing this? Maybe, uh, uh, maybe we could tell them that at the end of the unit, you will be able to him and to scan. Exactly, it is. Thank you. Well, I, I re another example I, I can mention, for example, in um, beginners. <coughs> For example, one of the topic is daily routine. All right, when you are present, when this, when your students, um, uh, they have used effectively the vocabulary. They understand you. For example, the verbs, the vocabulary about daily routines. Uh, they practice questions about uh, uh, what time do you have lunch or how often. So they need vocabulary, you know, in order to practice those activities. So. When you notice that they know that and they are familiar with this um, vocabulary, you can present a, a reading activity uh, related to a scheme, a scanning first and then a scheme because uh, it's easier it's easier for them to use uh, detailed information. Thank you, Andres. That was really helpful. Thank you, Mercedes. Andres, Diago, te quiere hacer una pregunta. Jaco, are you there? Hey, my friend, how are you? Welcome, Jaco. How are so, you, my friend? I'm so happy and excited to see my colleagues here and sharing with them this, this one of my contributions and experience that I can not necessarily teach because we are all teachers and we can contribute uh, from our experience. Yes, my friend. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate you because this is a very, very insightful topic. I think that you have, I mean, I've been listening to your presentation and it was really, really uh, insightful. Let me tell you, um, I Thank used you. to, I used to work with <clears throat> with, uh, I mean, training students for reading strategies. And I think that, that, that read, uh, skimming and scanning, are, you know, both very important, te important techniques. Uh, I used to do it like this. Maybe, maybe um, it could help some teachers. Uh, I used to tell my students to first read for gist. Mm -hmm. Read for yes. gist. So what I first tell them is, hey, don't read the questions. Don't read true or false yet. Don't, don't read the questions. I just want you to read the text just to enjoy it, just to understand the messages. The, the message, as Stephen Krashen used to say, we acquire language when we understand messages. And then when we, when we have read the text, then we can read the questions, the true or false questions, and then we scan then we scan the text 
in order to find the answers for the questions. So that worked for me. And uh, my students enjoyed reading because they say, hey, first time reading for gist, I, for pleasure. And then when, when, when the text asked me, uh, where is Mark from? Oh, I know, this is in the first paragraph. And I go and scan yes. the text in order to find the answer. In listening is the opposite. In listening, I have to start reading the questions, <laughs> right? I have to read the questions first and then listen to the audio, right? So when students get to understand these techniques on how to uh, solve these uh, exercises, they have fun in the class and they understand and they feel comfortable. I totally agree with you, my friend. Huh? Congratulations. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Jaco, for your contribution. And what you mentioned at the end, when you explain about the experience you had with your students about listening, uh, I remember that there are some listening strategies, uh, which Mercedes was asking me uh, late. Uh, she was asking me about if there are similar there are similar activities. Yes, yes, in, indeed, there are there reading and, and listening. There are both receptive skills. Okay, because yeah. you you are. Uh, getting the information so the process is cognitive evidently uh, mm -hmm. in, in my case in my case i was reading a book before we start this presentation about reading uh about skimming and scanning um and i found an activity that they were working with paragraphs now what you mentioned from vocabulary for example uh this word for example a synonym of sense of humor and the, and the, and the book and the synonym of that word was in the paragraph number yeah. two, <laughs> and the students were feel very excited because they feel, um, teacher, I'm funny. It was useful. I like it. Totally, yeah. So, but I think listening is great source of input. But the best, the, I think, for me, right, in my opinion, the most important source of input and exposure to the language is reading. So, a student that reads a lot. It improves grammar, speaking, fluency, punctuation, everything. So the more you read, mm -hmm. the better you speak. Some people think that the more you repeat, the better you speak. Or the more you practice speaking, the better you speak. No, the more you read, the better you speak. In Spanish, it's the same. People that speak beautiful Spanish is because they read a lot. Exactly. And English is the same. Yeah. Congrats, my friend. I, I enjoy your topic. <clears throat> Thank you, Jaco. And well, if one participant, one teacher, I can ask you, I can ask the questions. If you like to share an experience, you can do it. Finalización del programa. Well, okay. So, teachers. Just to conclude, before we, before we conclude, I will say, teachers, that try it on. Try to use in this in your classes, no? Especially now that you are working online, I think that when you present visually, okay, you can get attracted to your students. You can do it. I think now you can take, we can take in favor the circumstances that we're, this is not affecting us. I think that we can use in favor of presenting something new do it um, i know that we teachers sometimes uh we are excessively uh doing many things okay but we wouldn't do a good job like this no try to innovate things i think that you will have good results with your uh teaching and also with your uh, students outcomes okay so try to do it try to do it and then we can talk about it so i say thanks for your um attendance um for the next for the next saturday we will have another participation another person will be here he is a friend of mine he's from colombia he will be talking about the uh, platforms okay educative platform so i invite you i cordially invite you to be here again so thank you so much my friends marlene hi marlene I thought that you were do, uh, going to say something. Okay, teacher, so 
uh, this transmission has already finished, so have a nice There's, have the, a there's a question on the chat. Okay. So, uh, thank you. What do you think about using Spanish with English? Okay. Well, uh, the idea, the best idea, if you want to improve your English, even though your students don't have a basic, le uh, sorry, have a basic level, the idea is that you use the target language, which is English. How you can use it if your students don't have a good level of English? There are many ways you can do it. You can use mimics and also you can use effective vocabulary, rely on objects, or you can decorate your classroom with a specific cognate words, instructions, commands, or use simple words in English. Use simple English, basically, and your students will can uh, will understand you. So I think it's the best way. Spanish. I don't recommend to use a Spanish, okay? Someone can tell me, yes, a uh, uh, colleague, but uh, I live in a rural area. My students are nothing in, in English. Well, start doing step by step, like a baby step. Use basic English and use message. The most important thing is communication. So, it was a pleasure um, that you have been here. I can I wait for you in this uh, for the next transmission. Uh, as I told you at the same time, 7 p.m. So teachers, thank you so much and have a good night. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. The contribution. Thank you so much. Continue for the next week. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you, coordinator. Thank, Thank you, you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, friends. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Mercedes. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye teachers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.